And now in this lecture we will answer on two questions. In the first question we will find out the area of the blue shape and in the second question we will find out the radius of this circle that blocks triangle ABC. So we we'll start with the first question. In the drawing we have a big circle that blocks triangle ABC. AB is the diameter of the big circle. The radius of the big circle equals to 13 units. And uh, the triangle itself, triangle ABC, blocks the small circle. Actually, the small circle is inscribed by triangle ABC, and the radius of the small circle is equal to 4 units. And we want to find out the area of the blue shape. So, first of all, we will define the center of the small circle as O. We will define the point of tendency of tangent CB with the small circle as M. We will define the point of tendency of tangent AC with the small circle as N. We will define the point of tendency of tangent AB with the small circle as L. Then we will join points A, O, and M together by a straight line. O is the center of the small circle. M is the point on the small circle itself. So this is exactly the definition of a radius. So O, M is the radius of the small circle, so we'll define the radius of the small circle as small r, and we note that the radius of the small circle equals to 4, so small r equals to 4. We'll join points O and N together by a straight line. Here O is the center of the small circle, N is the point on the small circle itself, therefore O N is the radius of the small circle that is equal to four units according to, according to what is given as the question. So here we have the radius OM that is drawn to the point, uh, actually uh, before that I will mention rule number one, according to rule number one, a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tendency. So here we have the radius OM that is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say Radius OM is drawn to the point M that is the point of tendency of tendency B with the small circle. And whenever we have a radius that is drawn to the point of tendency, then according to rule number one, tangent CB will be perpendicular to the radius MO. So CB is perpendicular to MO, that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees according to rule number one. Likewise, we have the radius OM that is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point N, that is the point of tendency of tangent AC with the small circle. And whenever we have a radius that is drawn to the point of tendency, then tangent AC will be perpendicular to the radius NO. So AC is perpendicular to NO, that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees according to rule number one. And we also have uh, a new rule that any uh, peripheral angle that rests on the diameter of a circle is equal to 90 degrees. Here, peripheral angle ACB, this angle ACB rests on AB to the, the diameter of the big circle, therefore, according to the rule that I mentioned, angle ACB will be equal to 90 degrees. Okay? So actually, I found out that in quadrilateral ONCM we have 1, 2, 3 right angles. 
Okay. And the, the sum of three right angles for the other O N C M we have three right angles. And the sum of right angles is 90 times 3 is 270 degrees, plus the size of, of the four figures is actually angle M O N. In total, the sum of those uh, four angles must be equal to 360 degrees, according to the rule that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. Here we subtract. 270 degrees from this equation, and we we'll get the, the missing angle, angle O M O N. This is angle M O N. The missing angle, angle M O N equals to. 360 degrees minus 270 degrees it is equal to 90 degrees. So angle MON is right angle. Here we can write down that this angle equals to 90 degrees. So actually we found out that inside quadrilateral O and C M we have four right angles. And any quadrilateral that has four right angles must be at least a rectangle if not a square. So we relate to quadrilateral O N C N is a rectangle. For the other O N C N is a rectangle, but we also know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. This is to say N O equals to in rectangle N O C M N O equals to C M N O equals to C M repeat again N O equals to C M but we have already found out that N O equals to four units, it is the radius of the small circle. So we can write here that n o equals to 4, n o equals to 4, and from this equation 4 equals to n o equals to c m, we will derive that c m is also equals to 4 units. Okay? According to the same rule that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other, we will get that. O M equals to N C. O M equals to N C. But we have already found out that O M equals to four units. It is the radius of the small circle. Here yeah, O M equals to four units. And from this equation, four equals to O M equals to N C. We will derive that NC is also equal to four units. Okay, here NC is also equal to four units. So actually, we found out that that yeah, uh, we found out actually that all the sides of quadrilateral MOCN. Uh, are equal to each other and it is four right angles, therefore quadrilateral uh, NOCM is not a rectangle but a square. Okay. In the next step, we will define side AC of triangle ABC as A. AC equals to A according to our definition. We will define side BC. Is B again B C equals to B according to definition and we define 
is the diameter of AB SC. Okay, AB equals to 3. I call it normal definition. So, I repeat again that AC equals to A, CB equals to B, and AB equals to C. I repeat again, AC equals to A, BC equals to B, and AB equals to C according to one of definition. So what is the length of side AN? AN for the moment it is very easy to see that the length of side AN here AN equals to CA minus CN. CA minus CN equals to AN. So actually if I know that AN, and segment AN equals to its length to CA, CA is A according to our definition, minus CN. We have already found out that CN equals to four units. So if you found out that AN equals to A minus 4 units, likewise we find out the length of line segment MB from the drawing it is very easy to see that the length of line segment MB, MB equals to CB minus CM. CB minus CM equals to MB. So MB equals to CB, that is AB, that is B according to our definition, minus CM. CM equals to four units according to what we have already found out. So in conclusion, Found out that the length of line segment, the length of line segment MB equals to B minus 4. So, in conclusion, AM equals to A minus 4 and MB equals to B minus 4. Here, MB equals to B minus 4. And we have already found out that AN equals to A minus 4. Okay. In the next step, I will present to you rule number two. According to rule number two, the lengths of two tangents from a common extreme point to a circle are equal. Again, according to rule number two, the lengths of two tangents from a common extreme point to a circle are equal. So we will focus on the common extreme point, point A. From the common extreme point, point A, this point. We have two tangents to the small circle. We have tangent AL and tangent AN. According to one of two, the lengths of those two tangents must be equal to each other. So here AL equals to AN according to rule number two. But we have already found out that an equals to a minus 4. So we can write here that an equals to a minus 4. And from this equation, an equals to an equals to a minus 4, we will derive that an is also equal to a minus 4. an equals to a minus 4. 
Circle. We have tangent BL and tangent BM, and according to number two, the lengths of those two tangents must be equal to each other. So, M according to rule number two, BM equals to BL. Okay. But we have the found out that Bm equals to B minus 4. So here we can write down that Bm equals to B minus 4. And from this equation B minus 4 equals to Bm equals to Bl, we will derive that Bl is also equals to B minus 4. B L equals to B minus 4. In conclusion, we found out that B L equals to B minus 4 and A L equals to A minus 4. And uh, the diameter of any circle is twice as long as the radius. So, if we define the radius of this circle as capital R, then the diameter AB will be twice as long as the radius, that is to say, AB will be equal to 2 times capital R. But it is given us in the question that capital R equals to 13 units. Therefore, uh, the diameter AB will be equal to 2 times 13, that is 26 units. So AB equals to 26 units from one side, but from the other side, we just right now found out that AB equals to AL plus LB, AL plus LB. That is to say, it is equal to AL equals to A minus 4, and BL or LB equals to B minus 4. So, in conclusion, AB equals to, for one side to 26 units, and from the other side it is equal to a minus 4 plus b minus 4. So here we can get equation number 1 that states that a b that is equal to 26 units equals to a plus b minus 4 plus minus 4 is minus 8. So in conclusion we found out that according to equation number 1, 26 equals to uh, a plus B minus 8. Here we will add 8 to this equation, equation number 1, and we get that according to equation number 1, uh, 26 plus 8 is 34, that is equal to A plus B. A plus B equals to 34 according to equation number 1. Here we will square both sides of equation number 1 and we will get that A A 
a plus b square equals to 34 square. Here we will open the brackets on both sides of, of equation number one and we'll get that according to equation number one, a plus b square equals to a square plus b square plus two times a b that is equal to 34 square. 34 square is 1156. Okay. So in conclusion, according to equation number one, we found out that a square plus b square plus two times a b equals to 1156. In the next step, we will focus on the right triangle, triangle ABC. Triangle ABC is the right triangle because of the fact that angle ABCB equals to 90 degrees. So we implement the Pythagoras theorem on the right triangle, triangle ABC. Here by PT is the version for Pythagoras theorem. According to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. So the hypotenuse is AB, triangle ABC, and the square of the hypotenuse is AB square, and it must be equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say it must be equal to AC square plus CB square. I repeat again. In the right triangle, triangle ABC, according to the Pythagoras theorem, AB squared equals to AC squared plus CB squared. So here, AB equals to 26, therefore AB squared is 26 squared, that is 676. And it is equal to AC squared. AC equals to A, so AC squared is A squared plus CB squared. CB equals to B according to our definition, therefore CB squared is B squared. So actually, in conclusion, we found out that according to equation of law, 2a squared plus b squared equals to 676. While according to equation number 1, we have only found out that a squared plus b squared plus 2 times ab equals to 1156. Actually, you can substitute a squared plus b squared in equation number 1 by 676. Because 676 equals to a squared plus b squared according to equation number 2. We'll do it now and we'll get that a squared plus b squared is 676 plus 2ab that is equal to 1156. Here is some thoughts. 676 from this equation, equation number 1, and we get that according to equation number 1, 2 times AB equals to 480, because 1156 minus 676 is 480. So according to equation number 1, we found out that 2 times AB equals to 480. Here we divide this equation, equation number 1, by 2. And we get that according to equation number one, a times b equals to 480 over 2 is 240. Here we divide this equation also by 2. And we get that according to equation number one, a b over 2 equals to 240 over 2 is 120. If you know that AB over 2 according to equation number 1 equals to 120. Okay. What is the area of the blue shape? 
from the drawing it is very easy to see that the area of the blue shape equals to the area of triangle ABC minus the area of the small circle. I repeat again, the area of triangle ABC minus the area of the small circle equals exactly to the area of the blue shape. I repeat again, the area of the blue shape equals to the area of triangle ABC minus the area of the small shape. So the area of the blue shape equals to the area of triangle ABC. The area of triangle ABC equals to the base of the triangle that is AC times the height to the base that is CB over 2. I repeat again, the area of triangle ABC equals to AC, the base AC times the height to the base it is CB over 2 minus the area of the small circle. The area of the small circle equals to pi r square when r equals to 4 units. So in conclusion, we found out that the area of triangle ABC equals to AC is A, C, B is B over 2 minus pi r square r equals to 4, so r square is 4 squared is 16, so in conclusion the r of the, the small circle equals to 16 pi. So actually we found out that the r of the blue shape in conclusion, it was to a b over two minus pi minus sixteen pi. But we have already found out that a b over two equals to hundred twenty. So we substitute a b over two in, in this equation by hundred twenty minus sixteen pi. In conclusion, we found out that the area of the blue shape equals to either. 120 minus 16 pi square units, so in terms of numbers, it is equal to 69.73 square units. Okay. In the next step, we, we, uh, we, saw, we solve the second question. So in the drawing, we have triangle ABC that is inscribed by the circle. We know that the area of triangle ABC equals to 9 square units, side AB of triangle ABC equals to 5 units, side BC equals to 6 units. And we want to find out the radius of this circle that blocks triangle ABC. We will start with the first method. In the first method, from point A, we will draw perpendicular, perpendicular on BC. So actually, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees according so our construction we will define the touching point of the perpendicular from point A and B C as D.
So we actually know that the area of triangle ABC equals to 9 square units. But the area of triangle ABC equals to the best of the triangle that is BC. Times the height of the best that is AD. The height always must create 90 degrees with the best. And the did AD creates 90 degrees with BC, the best. Over 2. So the area of triangle... ABC equals to the best BC times the height to the best that is AD over 2. And it is equal to 9 square units. It is given us the question that BC equals to 6 units times AD over 2. And here 9 equals to 6 over 2 is 3 times AD, here we divide this equation by 3, equation number 1, and we will get that AD equals to 9 over 3, that is 3 units. So we found out that AD equals to 3 units. Here we can write down that AD equals to 3 units. In the next step, we will focus on the right triangle, triangle ABD. On the right triangle, triangle ABD, By PT is the version for Pythagoras theorem. The square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse is AB, the square of the hypotenuse is AB squared. And it is equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say it is equal to AD squared plus BD squared. I repeat again. In the right triangle, triangle ABD, AB square equals to AD square plus BD square. So here, AB equals to 5 units, so AB is 5 square, that is 25. And it is equal to AD, AD equals to 3 units, and AD square is 3 square, that is 9, plus BD square. BD is the missing line segment, so we leave it as it is. Here we subtract 9 from this equation, equation number 2, and we get that according to equation number 2. Twenty-five minus 9 is 16, so 16 equals to bd squared. Here we take a root out of this equation, equation number 1, and we get that bd equals to the square root of 16, that is 4 units. So we found out that BD equals to 4 units. Here you can write down that BD equals to 4 units. In the next step, we will focus on the right triangle, triangle ADC. In the right, uh, but first of all, we will find out the length of line segment DC. What is the length of line segment DC? This line segment. For the drawing, it is very easy to see that DC DC equals to BC minus BD. Again, DC equals to BC minus BD. BC minus BD. DC, so DC equals to 
BC that is 6 units minus BD that is 4 units. So in conclusion I found out that DC equals to 6 minus 4 that is 2 units. So DC equals to 2 units. Here we can line down that DC equals to 2 units. In the next step, we'll focus on the right triangle, triangle ADC. We'll implement the Pythagoras theorem on the right triangle, triangle ADC. In the right triangle, triangle ADC, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. So by PT, We get that the square of the hypotenuse is AC squared. That is equal to AD squared plus DC squared. I'll repeat again. In triangle. ADC according to the Pythagoras theorem, AC squared equals to AD squared plus DC squared. So AC squared equals to AD squared. AD is 3, so AD squared is 3 squared, that is 9, plus DC squared. DC is 2, DC is 2, so DC squared is 2 squared, that is 4. So in conclusion, we found out that AC squared equals to 9 plus 4, that is 13. AC squared equals to 13. We take a root out of this equation and we get that AC equals to the square root of 13. AC equals to the square root of 13 units. You can write down here that AC equals to the square root of 13 units. Okay. In the next step, we define the center of this circle as O, and then we join points A and O together by a straight line. And then we'll extend line segment AO by a straight line until it touches the circle at this point, we define the touching point of the extended line segment AO and the circle as point E. Okay. So actually, code AE passes through the center of the circle and any code that passes through the center of the circle is defined as a diameter. So AE is the diameter of the circle. Okay. But we know that the, the diameter of any circle is twice as long as the radius. So AE, if the radius of this circle is defined as capital R, then the diameter AE will be equal to 2 times capital R. So AE equals to 2R. In the next step, we join points B and E together by a straight line. We created the uh, peripheral angle ABE. This angle, angle ABE, is defined as a peripheral angle. And we have the rule that any peripheral angle that rests on the diameter of a circle is equal to 90 degrees. And because of the fact that peripheral angle, angle ABE rests on AE, that is the diameter of this circle, it must be equal to 90 degrees. So in conclusion followed that angle ABE equals to 90 degrees. Okay, so we can write down here that angle ABE 
equals to 90 degrees according to the rule that I mentioned and we also have here another rule according to the uh, following rule where if uh, peripheral angles that rest on the same chord are equal to each other I repeat again, peripheral angles that rest on the same chord are equal to each other. And if you focus on chord AB, we have here two peripheral angles that rest on chord AB, therefore they are equal to each other. Those two peripheral angles, they are both rest on chord AB, therefore they are equal to each other. That is to say, Chord ACB rests on, uh, on chord, angle ACB rests on chord AB. And also angle AEB, this angle also rests on chord AB, and therefore they are equal to each other according to the rule that I mentioned. Repeat again. Peripheral angle ACB is equal to peripheral angle AEB. Why? Because both of them rest on the same chord, chord AB, and according to the rule that I mentioned, they must be equal to each other. So, if we define angle ACB as theta, here, angle ACB equals to theta according to our definition, then from this equation theta equals to angle ACB equals to angle AEB, we will derive that angle AEB is also equals to theta. Angle AEB equals to theta. So we can write down here that angle AEB equals to theta. So in the angle AEB, angle AEB equals to theta, angle ABE equals to 90 degrees. So this again must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta in order to complete the sum of the angles in this triangle, triangle ABE to 180 degrees. This angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta. Why? Because 90 degrees minus theta plus theta is 90 degrees, and 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees. Here in triangle ADC, this angle theta, this angle is theta, this angle equals to 90 degrees, therefore Exactly for the same reason, this again must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta. So, in the next step, we will prove that the right green triangle, triangle AEB, is similar to the right green triangle, triangle ADC. Okay? So I write it down. We prove that the right green triangle, triangle ABE is similar to triangle ADC. So, why those two right green triangles are similar to each other? First of all, those two angles are both equal to 90 degrees, therefore they are equal to each other. So, angle ABE equals to this angle that is actually angle ADC. And both those two angles are equal to 90 degrees, therefore they are equal to each other. I repeat again, angle AB equals to angle ADC equals to 90 degrees. In addition, we have those two angles that are both equal to theta, therefore they are equal to each other. Okay, so until now, angle AEB is equal to this angle that is actually angle ACD. Double equal to theta. I 
I repeat it again. Angle AEB equals to angle AC D and the above equal to theta. And finally, those two angles, the above equal to 90 degrees from theta, the whole are equal to each other. That is to say, angle BAE. equals to angle DAC and the above equal to 90 degrees minus theta. Repeat again, angle B A equals to angle DAC and the above equal to 90 degrees minus theta, therefore they are equal to each other. So we actually proved that all three angles of triangle ABE you can go into all three angles of triangle ADC. Therefore, triangle ABE is similar. This is the sign of similar to triangle ADC according to angle, angle, angle similarity rule. Okay, so the two green triangles, they are similar to each other according to angle, angle, angle similarity rule. And from the fact that those two triangles are similar to each other, we will derive the following equation, surely that AB over AD AB over AD equals to AE over AC Repeat again from the fact that two green triangles are similar to each other, we conclude that AB over AD equals to AE over AC. Okay? AB equals to five units. AD equals to 3 units. AE is the diameter of the circle that is equal to 2 times capital R, and AC equals to the square root of 13 units. Okay? So, in conclusion, according to equation number 2, we found out that 5 over 3 equals to 2R over square root of 13. Here we multiply this equation by square root of 13. And we'll get that according to equation number 3. Five times square root of 13 over 3 equals to 2R. Here we divide this equation, equation number 3 by 2, and we get that according to equation number 2, are the radius of uh, this circle, that blocks triangle ABC, it is equal to either 5 times square root of 13 over 6 units, or in terms of numbers, it is a little bit greater than 3 units. Okay? The radius of the signal that the blocks are going to be equal to either 5 uh, times square root of 13 over 6 units, so in, in terms of numbers it is a little bit greater than 3 units. So we finished with the first method. In the next step, I present to you the second method.
in the second method we use the form we use the, all the things that we already found out in the first method. So here from point A we go perpendicular on B C. This angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle equals to 90 degrees for the power construction. We define the touching point from the, uh, of the perpendicular from point A and BC as D. We have already found out in the first method that AD equals to 4 units, BD equals to 4 units, and DC equals to 2 units. So in the next step, we'll extend side AD by set line until it touches the circle. At this point, point, we define the touching point of the extended AD in the circle as point E. Okay. Actually, AD is perpendicular, perpendicular to BC, therefore it is absolutely a straight line, and then we extended the straight line AD by a straight line, and we got line segment AE. Therefore, when you extend the straight line by a straight line, the result must be a straight line. So AE is a straight line, and we know that the sum of the angles on one side of a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So if we focus on this side of the straight line AE at point D, which I guess we have here, we have 90 degrees, plus this angle total that must be equal to 180 degrees. So this angle must be equal to 90 degrees in order to complete the sum of the angles on one side uh, of the straight line A to 180 degrees, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees. And uh, exactly in the same way, we can say that the sum of the angles on this side, the straight line A E at point D must be equal to 180 degrees. So, at point D we have on this side of AE, here is 90 degrees. So this angle must be equal to 90 degrees in order to complete the sum of the angles on this side of the straight line AE at point D to 180 degrees. This angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. So we actually found out that only the angles, sweep, uh, all the angles around point D are right angles. Okay. In the next step, I present to you a new rule, a rule that I've already mentioned in the past. And according, this will be rule number one. So here, we have the circle. And you actually have here called AB. This is called AB that intersects with called CD. This is called CD. And point O. Point O is the intersection point of called AB with called CD. So if this is the data that has been given to us, then the following equation is true. So here, code AB intersects with code CD at point O. Then according to number one, we'll get that AO times OB equals to CO times OD. Again, AO times OB equals to CO times OD. We actually can implement rule number one in our drawing. Why? Because in our drawing, we have 
have chord AE, we have this circle, and inside this circle we have chord AE that intersects with chord BC at point D. Therefore, according to rule number one, we will get that BD times DC equals to AD times DE. again BD times DC equals to AD times DE so BD is 4 DC is 2 and it is equal to AD is 3 and DE is the missing 9 segment so in conclusion I found out that 4 times 2 is 8 so 8 equals to 3 times DE. Here we we'll divide this equation by 3 and we'll get that according to this equation DE equals to 8 thirds. 8 over 3. Here DE equals to 8 over 3. In the next step, I will present to you rule number two, according to rule number, rule number two, let's move this circle, We also have here called AB. This is called AB. This is rule number two. So here called AB intersects with called CD. It's called CD at 90 degrees. So actually, code AB creates with code CD 90 degrees at the intersection point. We define the intersection point as point O. So here, all the angles around point O are right angles. Okay, so the two codes create 90 degrees between them at the intersection point. So if AO equals to A, AB equals to B, CO equals to C, and OD equals to D, then the following equation is true. 4 times out square equals to A square plus B square plus C square plus D square. I'll repeat again. If code AB intersects with code CD at 90 degrees, then 4 times R square R is the radius of this circle, the circle that contains the two codes. So 4 times R square equals to A square plus B square plus C square plus D square. We can implement rule number 2 in our drawing. Why? Because in our drawing we have code AE that intersects with code BC at 90 degrees, all the uh, angles around point O are right angles. So if we, uh, we call it rule number 2, we get here the 4 times R squared, R is the radius of this circle, the radius that we are looking for, equals to B D squared plus D C squared plus a d square plus e d square or d e square
So if 4 times r square equals to bd square, bd is 4, so bd square is 4 square, that is 16, plus dc square. dc is 2, so dc square is 2 square, that is 4, plus ad square. ad is 3, so ad square is 3 square, that is 9, plus de square. de is 8 over 3, so de square is 8 over 3 square, that is actually 64 over 9. So in conclusion, we found out that 4 times r square equals to 16 plus 4 is 20, and 20 plus 9 is 29, so it is 29 plus 64 over 9. Here we multiply 29 by 9, and then we will divide it by 9 in order to have a common factor with this expression. Here 29 times 9 is 261 plus 64 over 9. So 4 times r square equals to 261 plus 64 is 325 over 9. Here we divide this equation by 4 and we get that R square equals to 325 over 4 times 9 is 36. But 325 equals to 25 times 13 over 36. Here we take a root out of this equation and we get that R, the values that we are looking for, equals to the square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of 36 is 6 times 4 to 13 units. So we actually found out that the radius of this circle that blocks triangle ABC equals to either 5 over 6 times 4 to 13 units. So in terms of numbers, it is a little bit greater than 3 units. So we finished with the second method. In the next step, I will present to you how to find out the radius of this circle that draws triangle ABC according to the third method. Okay. In the third method, we define angle ABC as theta. And we have a special formula for the alpha triangle. So if we have triangle ABC, that could be any triangle. This is triangle ABC. The angle between side AB and side DC is theta. The length of AB is A units. Side AC equals to B units in its length. And side BC equals to C units in its length. Then the area of this triangle, triangle ABC, according to the new formula, will be equal to A times B times sinus theta over 2. Okay, so we use this formula in order to calculate the area of, any, uh, of, uh, of our triangle, triangle ABC. The area of our triangle, triangle ABC, according to the new formula, will be equal to AB times BC times sinus theta over 2. Repeat again, the of this again is AB times BC times sinus theta over 2. We, have already, we know that the of triangle ABC equals to 9 square units, so we we'll substitute the area by 9. 9 equals to, here AB is 5, 
bc6 times sinus theta over 2. So here, 9 9 equals to 5 times 6 is 30, and 30 over 2 is 15, so 9 equals to 15 times sinus theta. Here we divide this equation by 3, and we get that Nine over three is three, and fifteen over three is five. So in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number one, three equals to five times sine of theta. Here we divide this equation, equation number one by five, and we get that sine of theta equals to three fifths. Sine of theta equals to three fifths. So, we have the trigonometric identity that cosine theta equals to the square root of 1 minus sinus square theta. So, actually, cosine theta equals to the square root of 1 minus sinus square theta. Sinus theta equals to 3 fifths. So sinus square theta will be equal to 9 minus over 25. So here we will multiply 1 by 25 and then we we'll divide it by 25 in order to have a common factor with this expression. And we we'll get that cosine theta equals to the square root of 25 minus 9 over 25. So actually found out that cosine theta equals to 25 minus 9 is 16 over 25. So actually found out that sine of theta and uh, that cosine theta equals to the square root of 16 is 4 and the square root of 25 is 5. So cosine theta equals to 4 fifths. In the next step, I will present to you the law of cosines and we will implement the law of cosines in our triangle, triangle ABC. So I have already mentioned the law of cosines in the past. We will do it, we'll do it shortly. What is the law of cosines? So if we have triangle ABC, that could be any triangle. This is triangle ABC. Side AB of triangle ABC equals to A units in its length. Side AC equals to B units in its length. And side BC equals to C units in its length. Then according to the law of cosines, we get that cosine theta equals to a square plus b square minus c square over 2 times a times b. Again, cosine theta in this triangle, triangle ABC equals to a square plus b square minus c square over 2 times a times b. So we we'll implement the law of cosines in our triangle, triangle ABC. So in our triangle, triangle ABC, we'll get it. Cosine theta 
equals to a b square plus b c square minus a c square over two times a b times b c. Okay. Here. Yeah. Cosine theta equals to AB squared plus BC squared minus AC squared over 2 times AB times BC. So here we have already found out that cosine theta equals to 4 fifths. So we can substitute cosine theta in this equation by 4 fifths. And it is equal to AB squared. AB is 5, so AB squared is 5 squared, that is 25, plus BC squared. BC is 6, so BC squared is 6 squared, that is 36, minus AC squared, over 2 times AB is 5, times BC is 6. So here we found out that 4 fifths equals to 25 plus 36 is 61 minus AC squared over 5 times 6 is 30 and 30 times 2 is 60. Here we multiply this equation by 60 and we we'll get that 60 over 5 is 12, and 12 times 4 is 48, so 48 equals to 61 minus AC squared. Here we will add to this equation AC squared, and we will also subtract 48, and we'll get that AC squared equals to 61 minus 48 is 13. So AC squared equals to 13 units. We'll take note of this equation. And we find out that AC equals to the square root of 13 units. AC equals to the square root of 14 units. And you can write down that AC equals to the square root of 13 units. So in the next step, we'll present to you a new formula that calculates the radius of a circle that blocks triangle, any triangle. In our case, it is triangle ABC, but to put, it could be any other triangle, of course. So the radius of the circle that blocks triangle, uh, free triangle ABC that could be any triangle, will be equal to the multiplication of the sides of the triangle by each other. In this case, it's AB times AC times BC, AB times AC times BC over four times the area of the triangle that is described by the circle. In this case, it's triangle ABC. Okay. I repeat again, the radius of a circle that blocks the triangle uh, equals to the multiplication of the sides of the triangle by each other over four times the area uh, of the triangle that is blocked by the circle. So here we get that the radius uh, of our circle, the radius that we are looking for, equals to AB is 5, AC is square root of 13, and BC is 6. Over 4 times, the area of triangle ABC equals to 9 square units, so it is 4 times 9. So the radius of the circle that blocks triangle ABC equals to 5 times 6 is 30, and 30 times 4 to 14, over 4 times 9 is 36. Here we we'll divide both the numerator and the denominator uh, of this side of the equation by 6, and we get that the radius of the circle that we are looking for, it is equal to 30 over 6 is 5, and 36 over 6 is 6 times square to 13 units. So the radius of the circle that we are looking for, it is equal to either 5 over 6 times square 
of uh, 13 units, so in terms of numbers, it is a little bit greater than 3 units. Okay, so we finished with the third method. In the next step, I will summarize the lecture. We will start, of course, with the first question. So here we have the big circle and inside the big circle we have triangle ABC that is described by the big circle and triangle ABC itself blocks the small circle. The small circle is described by triangle ABC. The radius of the small circle is 4 units, the radius of the big circle is 13 units and AB is the diameter of the, of the big circle and we want to find out the diameter of the big, uh, blue shape. Okay, so first of all we define the center of the small, small circle as O. Uh, the point of tendency of tendency B with the small circle is M, the point of tendency of tendency A with the, with the small circle is N, and the point of tendency of tendency AB with the small circle is L. Then we join points O and M together by straight line, and we join points O and N together by straight line. O is the center of the circle, M is the point of the circle itself. So this is exactly the definition of a radius. That is to say, O M is the radius of the small circle that is equal to small r, and we, have, we know that small r equals to four units. And uh, exactly for the same reasons, O M is the radius of the small circle that is equal to 4 units. Then I present it to rule number 1. According to rule number 1, a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tendency. So whenever you have a radius like here, OM, that is drawn to the point of tendency, then tangent CB will be perpendicular to the radius MO. So CB is perpendicular to MO, that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees according to rule number one. Here we have the radius of n that is drawn to the point of tendency, therefore tangent AC will be perpendicular to the radius NO. AC is perpendicular to NO, that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle will also equal to 90 degrees, according to rule number one. Then we have another rule that states that any peripheral angle that rests on the diameter of a circle equals to 90 degrees. Here peripheral angle ACB, this angle ACB, rests on the diameter of this big circle that is AB, therefore angle ACB equals to 90 degrees according to the rule that I mentioned. So in quadrilateral O, in quadrilateral O and CM, we have three right angles, one, two, three. And the sum of three right angles is 90 times three is 270 degrees, plus the size of the four angle that is actually angle MON. In total, the sum of those four angles, four angles must be equal to 360 degrees. Here we subtracted 270 degrees from this equation and found out that the missing angle, angle MON, this angle equals to 360 degrees minus 270 degrees, it is equal to 90 degrees. So we actually found out that all four angles inside what we are ONCM are right angles, therefore quadrilateral ONCM must be at least uh, a rectangle of, if not a square, so we relate to quadrilateral ONCM as a rectangle. And we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other, that is to say NO equals to CM. NO equals to CM, but we have already found out that NO equals to 4 units. And from this equation, 4 equals to NO equals to CM, we learned that CM is also equals to 4 units. Likewise, from the same reason, we know that OM equals to NC. According to the rule, that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. But we have already found out that OM equals to 4 units, it is the radius of the small circle. So from this equation, 4 equals to OM equals to NC, we derive that NC is also equals to 4 units, NC equals to 4 units. So we found out that all the sides of quadrilateral O and CM are equal to each other, therefore quadrilateral O and CM is not a rectangle but a square. Then we define side A, C as A, side C, B as B, and side A, B as C. Okay? So, what is the length of line segment AN?
un nome di sorriso tu sì, di telefono francese che mette ieri, di dire qual tu sì, ehi, ma non sì, ehi, sì, ehi, ma non sì, ehi, questo è ehi. Io e io questo sì, ehi, ma non sì, ehi. So, e io questo sì, ehi, that is ehi, and sì, ehi, is for. So, in conclusion, e io questo ehi, ma non sì, ehi. Then, we found out the length of line same with MB from the door in this very easy to see that MB equals to CB minus CM. MB equals to CB minus CM. CB equals to B and, and then CM equals to 4. So in conclusion, we found out that MB equals to B minus 4. MB equals to B minus 4. Then I presented to you rule number 2. I presented to rule number 2 the length of two tangents from a common extreme point to a circle are equal. Again, the lengths of two tangents from a common extreme point to a circle are equal. So if you focus on the common extreme point, point A, from the common extreme point, point A, we have two tangents to this circle. Tangent A, L, tangent A, N. According to rule number one, they must be equal to each other. So A, L must be equal to A, L, according to rule number two. Okay? But we have already found out that a n equals to a minus 4. So we can write here that a n equals to a minus 4. And from this equation, a l equals to a n equals to a minus 4, we will derive that a l is also equals to a minus 4. If a l is also equals to a minus 4. Then we focus on the common extreme point, point B. But from the common extreme point, point B, we have two tangent to two tangents to the small circle, tangent BL and tangent BM. According to rule number two, the lengths of those two tangents must be equal to each other. That is to say BL equals to BM according to rule number two. Here, BL equals to BM according to rule number two. But we have already found out that BM equals to B minus 4. So can I tell that BM equals to B minus 4? And from this equation, B minus 4 equals to BM equals to BL. We will derive that BL is also equal to B minus 4. Here, BL is also equal to B minus 4. Okay? So we actually found out that BL equals to B minus 4 and AL equals to A minus 4. AB is the diameter of the big circle and the diameter of any circle is twice as long as the radius. So if the radius of the big circle is capital R, then the diameter will be equal to 2 times capital R. And we know that the radius of the big circle is 13 units, so 2 times 13 is 26. So the diameter of the big circle is 26 units. So from one side, the diameter AB equals to 26 units. From the other side, from the drawing, you can see that AB is also equal to AL plus LB. AB equals to AL plus LB. AL equals to A minus 4. LB equals to B minus 4. So AL equals to A minus 4 and LB equals to B minus 4. So in conclusion, 26 equals to A plus B minus 4 plus minus 4 is minus 8. According to equation number 1, we found out that 26 equals to A plus B minus 8. We added 8 to this equation, equation number 1, and we found out that 26 plus 8 is 34, so 34 equals to A plus B according to equation number 1. We squared the both sides of equation number 1 and we found out that AB squared equals to 34 squared. A plus B squared, we found out that A plus B squared equals to 34 squared. We opened the brackets on both sides of equation number 1 and we found out that A squared plus B squared plus 2 times AB equals to 34 squared, that is 1156. Okay, then we focus on the right triangle, triangle ABC. On the right triangle, triangle ABC, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse is AB, therefore the square of the hypotenuse is AB squared and is equal to AC squared plus CB squared. AB is 26, so AB squared is 26 squared, that is 676, and it is equal to AC, AC is A, so AC squared is A squared, plus CB squared. CB is B, so CB squared is B squared. So in conclusion, according to equation number 2, we found out that the A squared plus B squared equals to 676. That is to say, we can uh, 
substitute a square plus b square in equation number one by 676. We did it and we got that according to equation number one, a square plus b square is 676 plus two times a b equals to 1156. If we subtract that from this equation, equation number one, 676, and we got that 2 times AB equals to 1156 minus 676 is 480. So according to equation number 1, 2 times AB equals to 480. Here we divided this equation, equation number 1 by 2, and we got that A times B equals to 480 over 2, that is 240. So AB equals to 240 according to equation number 2. We divided this equation by 2. And we got that AB over 2 equals 240 over 2, that is 120. So according to equation number 1, we found out that A times B over 2 equals 220 units. Then what is actually the area of the blue shape? The area of the blue shape equals to the area of triangle ABC, minus the area of the small circle, very simple. The area of the blue shape equals to the area of triangle ABC, minus the area of the small circle. The area of triangle ABC equals to the base AC times the height of the base, that is CB over 2. So it is AC times CB over 2, and the area of the small circle is pi r square, when r equals to 4 units. So here AC equals to A, BC equals to B. So AC times BC over 2 is A times B over 2. And r equals to 4, so r squared is 4 squared, that is 16. So in conclusion, the r of the small circle equals to 16 pi. And the r of the ABC equals to AB over 2. But AB over 2 equals to 120, according to equation number 1. So we can substitute AB over 2 by 120. We did it, and we got in conclusion that the r of the blue shape equals to either 120 minus 16 pi, square units, so in terms of numbers, it is equal to 69.73 square units. We finish with the first question, then I present it to you. The second question, and we solve the second question in three different methods. In the drawing, we have this circle, and this circle blocks uh, triangle ABC, or triangle ABC is inscribed by this circle. We know that side AB equals to 5 units, side BC equals to 6 units and the area of triangle ABC is 9 square units and, uh, and we want to find out the area of this circle that blocks triangle ABC. So we actually know that the area of triangle ABC equals to 9 units. Here the area of triangle ABC equals to 9 units but the area of triangle ABC equals to also to the base of the triangle that is BC times, actually here from point A, we go perpendicular on BC, and we define the touching point of the perpendicular from point A and BC as D. So here we have AD is perpendicular to BC. So the area of triangle ABC will be equal to the base of the triangle that is BC times the height of the base that is AD over 2. Repeat again, the area of triangle ABC that is equal to 9 units equal to the base BC times A, the height of the base that is AD over 2. BC equals to 6. So in conclusion, we found out that the area of triangle ABC is equal to 9 square units. It is sine 6 times AD over 2. 6 over T over 2 is 3. So we found out that 9 equals to 3 times AD. We divided this equation, equation number 1 by 3, and we found out that AD equals to 3 units. Here, AD equals to 3 units. Then we focus, uh, we actually found out. Uh, uh, the length, uh, but first of all, uh, so it equals to four units, then uh, we focus to, on triangle ABD. In triangle ABD, in triangle ABD, according to the Pythagoras theorem, AB squared equals to AD square plus BD square. Okay. And AD according to the Pythagoras theorem, AB square equals to AD square plus BD square. AB is 5, so AB square is 5 square, that is 25. It is equal to AD square. AD is 3, so AD square is 3 square, that is 9, plus BD square. So 25 equals to 9 plus BD square, according to equation number 2. We subtracted 9 from this equation, equation number 2, and found out that 
25 minus 9 is 16, so 16 equals to BD square, we took the root of the dosage equation, equation number 2, and found out that BD equals to the square root of 16, that is 4. Okay, so here we found out that BD equals to 4 units. Then, what is the length of DC? From the domain, it is very easy to see that DC equals to BC minus BD. DC equals to BC minus DB. BC is 6, BD is 4, so in conclusion, we found out that DC equals to 6 minus 4, that is 2. Yeah. DC equals to 2 units. Okay, then we focus on the right triangle, triangle ADC. In the right triangle, triangle ADC, this right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the circles of the perpendiculars. That is to say, AC square equals to AD square plus DC square. So AC square equals to AD square. AD is 3, so AD square is 3 square, that is 9, plus DC square. DC is 2, so DC square is 2 square, that is 13. So in conclusion, we found out that AC square equals to 9 plus 3, that is 13. So we took a lot of this equation and found out that AC equals to the square root of 13 units. Here. AC equals to the square root of 14 units. Then we define the center of this circle as O, and we join points A and O together by a straight line, and then we, ex uh, we extend that the straight line AO until it touches the second point A. Point A is the touching point of the extended AO in the circle. So here, called AE passes through the center uh, of this circle, therefore it is defined as the diameter of this circle. Then we join points A and B together by a straight line. We created here and again A, B, E that rests on the diameter of the circle. Therefore, it is equal to 90 degrees. I want to do that any perfect angle that rests on the diameter of the circle equals to 90 degrees. So angle A, B, E equals to 90 degrees. And uh, uh, then I presented to you another rule the peripheral angles that rest on the same code are equal to each other. Peripheral angles that rest on the same code are equal to each other. So those two peripheral angles they are both rest on code AB, therefore they are equal to each other. I repeat again, angle ACB rests on code AB, and angle AB also rests on code AB, therefore they are equal to each other according to the rule that I mentioned. So we define angle ACB as theta. Then from this equation, theta equals to angle ACB equals to angle AB. We derive that angle AEB, this angle also equals to theta. So in triangle AEB, this angle equals to so theta, this angle equals 90 degrees, so this angle must be equal to 90 degrees from theta in order to complete the sum of the angles in this triangle to 180 degrees, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees from theta. So in triangle ADC, this angle equals to theta, this angle equals to theta, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and for the same reason, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees from theta. Then we prove that the two green triangles are similar to each other. Why they are similar to each other? First of all, those two angles are both equal to theta, therefore they are equal to each other. Those two angles are both equal to 90 degrees, therefore they are equal to each other. Those two angles are both equal to 90 degrees minus theta, therefore they are equal to each other. So we prove that all three angles of triangle ABE are to all three angles of triangle ADC, therefore triangle ABE is similar to triangle ADC, according to angle, 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 similarity all. Okay? And from the fact that the two triangles are similar to each other, we will derive that AB over AD equals to AE over AC. AB is 5, AD is 3, AE is 2R, it is the diameter of the circle, and AC is square root of 13. So we multiply the equation number 3 by square root of 13 and found out that 5 times square root of 13 over 3 equals to 2R. We divided this equation equation number 3 by 2 and found out that R, the radius of the circle that we are looking for, equals to either 5 over 6 times square root of 13 units. So in terms of numbers, it is a little bit greater than 3 units. So we finished with the uh, 
first method that I presented to you, how to find out the area and the radius uh, of uh, this circle that rocks triangle ABC according to the second method. In the second method, we used all the things that we already found out in the first method. Here from point A we go from perpendicular on BC, so this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle also equals to 90 degrees according to our construction. We define the touching point of the perpendicular from point A and BC as D. Okay, this equals to 2, BD equals to 4, and AD equals to 3 units according to the first method. And uh, then we extended line segment AD by the straight line until it touches. The second is point E. Point E is the touching point of the extended AD and the circle. Then I presented to you rule number one according to rule number one. If called AB intersects with called CD at point O, then AO times OB equals to CO times OD. Again, AO times OB equals to CO times OD. Here we have Called AE that is a sex record B and C at uh, point uh, called AE the sex record BC at point D. Therefore, according to all number one, we will get that BD times DC equals to AD times DE. BD times DC equals to AD times DE. BD is 4, DC is 2. AD is 3 and DE is the missing line segment, so 4 times 2 is 8 and 8 equals to 3 times DE. We divided this equation by 3 and we found out that DE equals to 8 thirds, 8 over 3 units. DE equals to 8 over 3 units. Then according to the rule that uh, the sum of the angles from one side of a certain line equals to uh, 180 degrees, all the angles around point D on right angles. Then I presented to you rule number two and we implemented rule number two in our drawing. According to rule number two, if code A B intersects we code C D at 90 degrees, then four times R square, R is the radius of the circle that contains the two codes. Four times R square equals to A square uh, plus b square plus c square plus d square. 4 times r square equals to a square plus b square plus c square plus d square. In our domain, we have called bc that in the sense we called ae at 90 degrees. All the angles around 20 are 90 angles. Therefore, we can implement rule number 2 here. According to rule number 2, we need that 4 times r square equals to bd square plus d c square plus AD squared plus DE squared. Again, 4 times R squared equals to BD squared plus DC squared plus AD squared plus DE squared. So 4 times R squared equals to BD is 4, so BD squared is 4 squared, that is 16, plus DC squared. This is 2, so DC squared is 2 squared, that is 4, plus AD squared. AD is 3, so AD squared is 3 squared, that is 9, plus D is squared. D E is 8 over 3, so D is squared is 64 over 9. So in conclusion, I found out that 4 times R squared equals to 16 plus 4, that is 20, and 20 plus 9 is 29. So we have 29, 4 times R squared equals to 29 plus uh, 64 over 9. Here we multiplied the 29 by 9 and then we divided by 9 in order to have a common factor with this expression. So 29 times 9 is 261, so we have 261 plus 60. 4 over 9. 261 plus 64 is 325. So in conversion formula, the 4 times R square equals to 325 over 9. We divided this equation by 4 and found out that R square equals to 325 over 9 times 4 is 36. But 325 is 25 plus 25 times 13. So we substituted, we substituted 325 by 25 times 13, and we got that R square equals to 20 times 13 over 36. We took out, out of this equation and found out R, the radius of the circle that we are looking for. The radius of the circle that blocks triangle ABC equals to either 5 over 6 times cos of 13 units. So in terms of numbers, it is a little bit greater than 3 units. Then I presented to you 
We defined angle A, B, C as theta. Then I presented to you a new formula that according to the new formula, you can find the arm of any triangle according to the new formula. If we have triangle A, B, C that could be any triangle, side A, B equals to A units, side A, C equals to B units, and side B, C equals to C units. Then according to the new formula, the area of this triangle, triangle ABC, will be equal to A times B times sinus theta over 2. Here, the area of this triangle, triangle ABC, equals to A times B times sinus theta over 2. So we actually found the area of triangle ABC according to the new formula. According to the new formula, the area of this triangle, triangle ABC, will be equal to a B times B C times sinus theta over two. A B times B C times sinus theta over two. But we know that the arm triangle ABC equals to nine square units. So we substitute the arm triangle ABC by nine. So nine equals to A B to this five B C is six times sinus theta over two. So nine equals to five times six is thirty and thirty over two is fifteen. So 9 equals to 15 times sinus theta. We divided this equation by 3 and found out that 9, 9 over 3 is 3 and 15 over 3 is 5. So in conclusion, according to equation number 1, we found out that 3 equals to 5 times sinus theta. We divided this equation by 3, by 5, and found out that according to equation number 1, sinus theta equals to 3 fifths. Sinus theta equals to 3 fifths. But we also have the trigonometric identity that states that cosine theta equals to the square root of 1 minus sine square theta. Okay, so here cosine theta equals to 1 and sine theta equals to 3 fifths. Therefore, sine square theta is 3 fifths square. That is, uh, 3 square is 9 and 5 square is 25. So cosine theta equals to the square root of 1 minus 9 over 25. We multiplied 1 by 25 and then we divided by 25 in order to have a common factor of this expression. And in the conclusion, we found out that cosine theta equals to 25 minus 9 over 25. So cosine theta equals to 25 minus 9 is 16 over 25. And uh, cosine theta equals to the square root of 16 is 4 and the square root of 25 is 5. So in conclusion, we found out that cosine theta equals to 4 fifths. Then I presented to you the row of cosines and we implemented the row of cosines in our triangle, triangle ABC. What is the, is the row of cosines that I already mentioned in the past? Here we have triangle ABC that it could be any triangle. Side AB equals to A units, side AC equals to B units, and side BC equals to C units. And here, the angle between side AB and side AC is theta. Then according to the law of cosines, we get that cosine theta, this is angle theta, equals to A square plus B square minus C square over 2 times A times B. Again, cosine theta equals to A square plus B square minus C square over 2 times A times B. Implemented the law of cosines in our triangle, triangle ABC. According to the law of cosines, we get that cosine theta equals to AB square plus BC square minus AC square over 2 times AB times BC. Again, cosine theta equals to AB square plus B square, AB square plus BC square minus AC square over 2 times AB times BC. We've already found out that cosine theta is 4 fifths, so we substituted cosine theta by 4 fifths. So we found out that 4 fifths is equal to AB square. AB is 5, so AB square is 5 square, that is 25, plus BC square. BC is 6, so BC square is 6 square, that is 36, minus AC square, about 2 times AB is 5, and BC is 6. So here, 4 fifths equals to 25 plus 36 is 61, minus AC square, over 5 times 6 is 30, and 30 times 2 is 60. So 4 fifths equals to 61 minus 60 square over 60. We multiply this equation by 60, and we got that uh, 
60 over 5 is 12, and 12 times 4 is 48. So 48 equals to 61 minus AC squared. Here we added AC squared to this equation and subtracted 48 simultaneously, and found out that AC squared equals to 13. We took a root out of this equation and found out that AC, here, sine DC of triangle ABC, equals to the square root of 13 units. Then I presented to you a new formula. According to this formula, we can calculate the, uh, the radius of any circle that blocks triangle. And in our uh, drawing, we have uh, this circle that blocks triangle ABC. So the radius of any circle that blocks triangle will be equal to the multiplication of the sides of the triangle by each other. In this case, it is AB times AC times BC over 4 times the area of the triangle that is blocked by the circle. In this case, triangle ABC blocks blocked by the circle, so it is over four times the area of triangle ABC. So it, it is uh, the radius of this circle equals to the multiplication of the sides of the triangle by each other. It is AB times AC times BC over four times the area uh, of the triangle that is blocked by the circle that is triangle ABC over four times the area of triangle ABC. AB equals to five, AC equals to four to thirteen units, BC equals to six over 4 times the area of triangle ABC. And it is given as the question that the area of triangle ABC equals to 9 square units. So in conclusion, found out that R equals to 5 times 6, that is 30, over 4 times 9, that is 36. So R equals to 30 over 36 times square root of 13. We divided both the numerator and the denominator of this side of the equation by 6, and we found out that R equals to 30 over 6 is 5 and 36 over 6 is 6. So in conclusion, we found out that the radius of this circle that blocks triangle ABC equals to either 5 over 6 times square to 13 units, or in terms of numbers, the radius of this circle that blocks triangle ABC equals to a little bit, uh, uh, it is a little bit greater than 3 units. Again, the radius of this circle, according to all the three methods, is equal to either 5 over 6 times square to of 13 units, or in terms of numbers, it is a little bit greater than 3 units. Okay, uh, thank you very much.